Welcome! Um, I will show you how to install PubOS 204 with a full disk encryption but a RFS LVM inside Lux structure because this is very useful for instance for running time shift on it for easy system rollback and auto snapshots. Um, I have some links in the show notes um, how why ButterFS is cool and all the commands I'm gonna run especially in the terminal are also can be found in this show notes. Okay, um, let's uh, go ahead, select the language, um, stick to English. Um, I have a German keyboard. And before we uh, hit custom advanced, uh, we actually need to create the partitions ourselves. Um, I'm running a virtual machine. Um, so let's open up a terminal. Um, and I'm running on a, it's on a virtual machine. Um, so I have a clean disk, uh, there's nothing on it yet. So let's quickly check whether or not we are using FE. All right, this looks good, because otherwise the system deboot uh, manager wouldn't work. And okay, so let's open up an interactive uh, sudo and prepare our partitions manually. First of all, you have to find out what is the actual name of your partition. Um, of course, you can also use gparted. Um, I don't really care. Okay, I have um, in this virtual machine, I have two disks. Um, there's another guide how to set up a RAID 1 uh, with this setting, but this is beyond the scope of this tutorial. Uh, you can use, of course, gparted as well. For me, it's always called VDA. Um, but let's stick to the terminal. I can also see it here. All right. Let's uh, maybe I can increase the how do I increase the, the font size uh, probably here somewhere um, custom font let's do a let's do it like this Okay, this looks better. All right, so now um, let's prepare our partitions. We will have a 512 megabyte FAT32 partition for the FE and the system debug loader, a four gigabyte uh, recovery partition, which is basically just a clone of our ESO installer, and a Lux encrypted partition, which contains a LVM with only one logical volume, but this is one is formatted to ButterFS and it will be our root file system. So let's do this. Let's, uh, I like using parted for this. Um, let's first make a partition table, um, GPT, and then I'm gonna create a um, 512 megabyte, um, it needs to be this, um, partition, my bad. Wait for it. Ah. Okay, there's um, there was something on it. Let's delete it. Okay, okay, let's do it again. Um, make label GPT. Yes. Okay, everything is deleted now. The whole partition. Now let's make a primary. One and five thirteen. Okay. And the recovery partition will be four gigabytes, um, which is for me, which will be this. And the last partition will contain our root file system inside the LVM. So four six oh nine and a hundred percent. Okay, let's name the first one Effie. The second one will be recovery. And the third one will be our crypt data. Um, let's do a bias grub on flag on the first and the ESP flag on as well. So let's print this and we see our partition table. Of course, you can also use gparted to double check 512 megabyte, 4 gigabyte here, and the rest is allocated for 
the Lux partition, which we will now create. Okay. Now let's create the Lux partition. Um, uh, actually, we'll system deboot can handle type 1 and type 2 uh, Lux uh, encryption just fine. We don't have to really change any default settings here. Um, okay, Lux format. For me, it's always VDA and the third partition. All right, I want to do this. Let's put in a very hard password here. Um, so nobody can decrypt our partition. Okay, now let's open the container. And let's call it crypt data. Enter the passphrase. Let's have a look at dev mapper and you can see crypt data is mapped and it's open. Okay. Um, now we have to create the LVM for the Pop OS installer. This is a bit of an overkill, but otherwise the Pop installer um, does not, uh, I, I, we cannot use the custom um, partitioning uh, setting there. Um, but of course we have more flexibility with a LVM. So we uh, have to make Cryptator first a physical volume. So physical volume create def mapper Cryptator. All right, successfully created. We have to create a volume group and to, let's also call this crypt data. This is basically what PopOS does as well when you hit uh, full disk encryption automatically. Okay, volume group. And let's create one logical volume. Let's call this data root. Let's allocate it a hundred percent free of our volume group crypt data. All right. Now let's have a look into dev mapper. Okay, and now this is our actual partition which we will format with butterfs. There is no need to uh, have additional partitions for home or swap or stuff like that because we will use sub volumes for that. This is the, the nice beauty about Butterfess and once we have those sub volumes we can easily um, take snapshots uh, which will take less than a second. Again in the show notes I have a, a link why Butterfess is pretty cool. Okay now let's close everything. Lux close. Um, data root first and then the crypt data. And now double check. Okay, nothing is open. Now let's go ahead and um, run the installer. Okay, so we will do custom advanced. And here is here's my second disk, which I don't need for this tutorial. Here's the first disk. Okay. Let's use this partition um, and this will be our, um, this is FAT32, our boot FE partition. Okay, there is a check mark. This will be our, also FAT32, but we have to do recovery custom. So this is where PopOS will copy the installer files and we have a nice uh, boot menu, boot entry for this, well, if anything goes wrong. And this, over here is our Lux container, which PopOS wants us to decrypt happily. Put in your password. And now we have here our data root. Okay, and I will use this partition for root, but I will use ButterFS. All right, erase and install. The, <clears throat> the actual installer will create, um, uh, won't create uh, a swap file, so we, we have to do this um, post-install um, because ButterFS can handle this quite nicely since kernel 5 something. Um, of course, you could have set up a dedicated swap partition as well, but I usually don't do this. Um, all right, let's wait.
Usually this takes just a couple of minutes. I have, um, Let's just pause the video right here. And... All right, we are back. Um, Papua has installed everything fine without error. Do not hit restart device or shutdown yet. Um, let's go back to our terminal. So what Papua has does, it, it just does a plain install with ButterFS and does not create any sub volumes. Um, so we have to do this uh, in a sense, manually. All right, so let's um, open up our container again. All right, let's have a look. All right, there's everything. And let's mount our partition and using some options um subval id5 means this is the butterfest top level root partition this is what the five um, it's very standard in linux um and i also want to um since i'm using ssds i um added some some mount options i found very useful um for instance ssd um which uh, optimizes everything for ssd use um no a time which uh, has uh, prevents frequent disk writes, um, which is quite nice. This also includes no, dir uh, no directory A time, um, so we don't need to have that. Space catch for better performance and commit equals 120. This is the time interval in which data is written to the file system. I just took this value from Manjaro. Um, and very good is also comp to set compress. Um, taken from Pharonix benchmarks, uh, this is, works quite nicely with ButterFS. Okay, and this is our data root, and we will mount this to MNT. Okay, now let's create, let's have a look into mount first. Okay, this is our root file system. Bam. Looks good. There's of course nothing in home yet because the Pop OS, um, you have to first reboot and then create user their, their, um, accounts. This is quite nice for our setup. Okay, but we are we have ButterFS, okay? ButterFS, uh, let's have a look. File system show and mount. There is only the top volume ID. There are no sub volumes, okay? So if I do a ButterFS sub volume list, mount there is nothing so let's create the ubuntu or uh, you, um, the ubiquity installers layout or, or what manjaro does with calamaris uh, create add for the root and at home for home and also add swap for the swap file okay so let's create a sub volume um create and let's put this into add all right, so it looks like a folder, but this is actually a subvolume. Okay, if we do subvolume list, this is now actually subvolume has a top level five, of course, but it is a subvolume now. Okay, and now let's copy all files. All right, grab at xargs. Let's actually not copy, let's move them into this folder add okay and this is nice because um Pop OS did not use compression or commit or space catch or anything of those mount options to to copy those files but now we have we are using these mount options for for optimal use and now it's taking all the files and putting them into this folder well, not folder but sub volume add and it shouldn't take too long again i'm running a virtual machine um, might take a couple of seconds. There we go. Okay, let's have a quick look. Nothing is in here anymore. Let's have a look. No hidden files. Everything is now in add. Perfect. Good. Now let's also create a sub volume for at home. All right, and add swap. Cool. Now we have three sub volumes. Um, if you want more, please feel free to do so. And now let's also have a look at subvolume list mount. 
at at home at swap. All right, now um, we have to adapt some settings in the FS tab. Okay, so let's go into mount um, at etc. FS tab. So this over here, very very basic. Um, it will mount this the root. Tells you this is ButterFS, okay, and it only has defaults value. And I don't want this. First of all, I want this to um, mount, to open up the sub volume, which I call add. And then I want almost uh, optimized mount options for SSDs. Catch uh, commit equals 120 and compress equals ZSTD. And 0, 0 is quite nice because these flags are actually for FS check, which does not work with ButterFS. Okay, now um, let's do the same for copy, paste, home. Okay, let's mount the sub volume at home to home. Okay, and for swap. Okay, so we will mount to a directory which we haven't created yet um, so called swap and add swap all right looks good and let's get out of here okay now um what we um so we we've mounted uh, home, um, yes, we're creating the, the, the swap file right now, okay? So we have not created um, the swap file here. Let's first um, make this directory called swap. Oh, no, that was not here. Um, in add swap, okay. All right. So um, in order to for ButterFS to, to work with swap files, you have to put this in its own uh, sub-volume. Otherwise, you can't take uh, snapshots of the of other um, sub-volumes. All right, and there are uh, several commands you just have to run to optimize use, do not compressions. Um, so the, the file system basically knows this is a swap file. Okay, one is uh, the truncate command. Uh, you can find these commands all over the uh, internet. Okay, and I will put the swap file into its own sub volume at swap and I will call this swap file. All right, I have to change some attributes. Um, so mount at swap, swap file and set some butterfest property. Mount at, um, oh, sorry, at swap, swap file very important no compression we do not want this for swap um and i put two gigabytes in here um actually on my on my real systems i have 64 gigabytes and i usually put like eight gigabytes or four gigabytes for i dedicate this to swap um but let's keep keep it to two Okay, let's change permissions. All right, mount at swap, swap file. And let's make this a swap file. Mount at swap, swap file. All right. Now we have to tell the FS tab uh, again to mount this um as is a real swap file so again let's open up etc fs tab we have already <coughs> created this directory swap um and the sub volume is mapped to swap similar to to home hope you, you you see this now we only have to tell the system to use this as the swap file to use this as a swap, swap space so none swap Defaults is fine here, zero, zero. All right, exit. Okay, now we are almost finished. Um, PopOS uses a system 
Deboot. So we have to um, adjust the, the, the entry to this. Okay, so let's um, mount our FE partition, um, which was VDA1 <clears throat> to boot FE. Oh, sorry, of course, it does not exist because I have moved everything to it. Okay, now let's have, um, let's go into mount at boot FE loader and change some settings here. So there's a loader conf file, <coughs> sorry, which um, you can put some, some basic options here. I always put in timeout equals, I don't know, two seconds. So in case I need to run the recovery system or um, need a break uh, for some reason to change some settings, uh, I might put in a two seconds or one second in here. And there's also um, this entries and PAPOS current conf, okay? And here it mounts the root partition. This is the UID, this is quite nice, okay? But it's missing actually some root flags, okay? So root flags equals subval equals add. We need to, to, to tell the system that it actually needs to look into a sub volume, okay? The problem is um, anytime I'm installing a new kernel or a running, running update in a DramaFS for some reason, this will be overwritten, okay? Because the default uh, kernel stop option does not include this. And we will change that, okay? So go um, uh, into, uh, sorry, sudo mount at, um, uh, where was it, etc. kernel stop configuration, okay? This is the very important file. And here you will find the user options and we will add this root flags equals sub vol equals add. There you go. So now, whenever you run an update, a kernel update or something like that, um, the, um, the hook will um, write this, uh, these root flags into PAPOS current conf as well. Okay, and I think we are done. Now it has actually gone exit and restart our device. Okay, let's unlock. Fingers crossed. There we go. And now we can create our user account. I know many people like the dark theme, I don't. Um, my time zone is Berlin. <clears throat> no, Willy. Okay. I like my coffee. Willy, Willy. All done. Okay, some quick che um, quick checks. Open up a terminal again. Um, of course, you should now install updates and stuff like that. But um, let's have a, a look at um, the system. Okay, let's have a look at our FS tab first. Um, okay, I should you should change the fonts again. Okay, um, cool. They didn't change anything here. Let's change, look how this got mounted. 
And if you have a look in here, okay, recovery, perfect. FE is also mounted. The swap. Um, oh, I, sh I should change these. I do not need this actually. Um, nah, nah, it doesn't matter. Um, because I have, uh, yeah. Okay, and where is our system? There it is, up there. Okay, cool. Everything got mounted correctly. Let's have a look at our, um, oh, we need to install ButterFS Prox first. Oh, well, and already he's, you, you can you can see here that whenever update in a DramFS um, is called, then um, our PubOS current configuration file is actually changed. So if we didn't change that in configuration file and kernel stub, um, we should check this. Um, let's check this quick. Um, boot. FE uh, loader entries and this is PopOS current whether or not there's still root flag support at cool of course if something goes wrong you always have your recovery system that's fine um all right let's have a look at butterfers file system show looks good sub volume list we have and let's, um, for those of you who are new to Butterfest, let's create a, um, a directory, Butterfest pool, and let's mount our top level root um, file system to this. So this is dev mapper crypt data data root into this folder. Okay, Butterfest pool. And let's have a look into this Butterfest pool. Here you can see at, at home, at swap. And if you have a look at, say, this is the same as if you would look into here. Or have a look in your at home sub volume. This is the same, this is mounted actually to here. Okay, or have a look into your swap. Okay, and this is the same as in here. Okay, and this is this is um, gets used to 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 this um, sub volume versus directory structure. And it's, it's it's similar, but it's not quite the same. Um, but it's very useful. Um, I find this in particular useful for using time shift. So let's install time shift. Okay. And we can actually use Butterfest with time shift. That's pretty cool. Um, there's a bug in here. It doesn't actually show me my dev mapper stuff in here, but it doesn't matter. I know this one is formatted with Butterfest, so we just could next. And what I usually do is I create automatic snapshots daily. And at boot, at boot, this will actually create snapshots like 10 minutes in. Um, and I usually keep like three dailies and sorry three weekly um, snapshots um, next I also include at home because whenever I restore I can actually also e exclude at home so this is this is not a backup but whenever uh, like the installer messes up, um, sorry the updates messes up something or I delete something I can just very very quickly run up uh, the system uh, move uh, sub volumes around or simply use time shift and I'm back Okay, so I can close it and bam, you have created your first snapshot. It takes mere less than a second. And now when if anything breaks, you can just go back to the snapshot. If you can't open your, your system, then just run the recovery 
uh, system or any ESO or Linux live system, install timeshift, point it to, to this partition. Um, of course, you have to always use crypt setup, lux open and stuff like that. But once this is uh, the lux open is um, done, you can simply restore everything. Okay, that's it. I hope you find this uh, useful. Um, I love Pop OS 20.04, um, especially this tiling feature here. And um, if you are interested in how to uh, set this up also in a rate one using ButterFS capabilities, um, I have another link on video in the show notes. All commands I used here are also, you can find these on my, on my homepage. I um, hope that this useful as well. And yeah, have a good day.